What is up everybody, Duck here, and I'm back with some new resources for doing the internals of the box. So, we've got some fiberglass resin, uh, some woven matting. This is more similar to carbon fiber than fiberglass mat, which is pretty neat. I've also got two types of expanding foam. Uh, three times expanding and about 20 times expanding. Uh, this stuff is going to be good for filling voids and this stuff will be a bit denser so I'll likely put it under the surface which I'm fiberglassing if I'm trying to build up a bit more thickness to it. I've also got some builder's bog just for getting the uh, curves nice and smooth and filling in any gaps and of course here's the here's the hardener. So I've got one kilo of fiberglass resin just there. I'm hopefully going to be going to get enough out of that to also paint the internals of the box with them uh, to make it nice and smooth. So I'll see how well that goes. Uh, they didn't have any of the pigment there from what I could see. So I think for this first box I might just paint it and maybe if I make a second one of these I'll make it look fancy or possibly I could add another layer which has the pigment added to it on top after I've finished the box. But I'll have to mask it up then and do other things. I've also got a bit of a progress update on the internals. Uh, because this part's uh, reasonably stressful, I've decided just to do a lot of it off camera. So in here, I've started mocking up a skeleton of how the progression's gonna go. As I mentioned before, the key thing for this horn is that every part is wider than the previous. So that's why I've made up some pieces just like this, which is going to be going in there. And it's going to be going in there just to make sure that I'm having the right expansion rate. Now this piece right here is going to be going between the tube and the first bit where it starts to curve downward. So it's going to be going right there and hopefully directing the airflow downward. But yeah, you can see that this is actually starting to get quite complex. I'm going to have to take these together with bits of wood, sit them in there, then add expanding foam around it, and then cover away the expanding foam, then add the other expanding foam, and then fiberglass over the top, and then possibly build this bog and sand. So yeah, this is going to be quite difficult. Luckily, the surface area of this shouldn't be too high. Also, uh, these, these two halves right here, um, I just have sitting there just for an idea, but yeah, that'll give you a bit better view of this here where the air comes in the bottom there that it curves up here and comes out the front out of that space just there these curves are still going there but um, yeah, they don't seem to fit too well which is a, a bit disappointing so I'll have to have a think of what to do with those bits as long as this bit's 7.5 centimeters here this one can be a tad less so the surface area of this part here needs to be uh, 425 square centimeters so I should be able to work out how wide this needs to be also I might need to take a bit off the thickness of those bits but there are going to be bits of wood that are going along there and along there uh, there's also going to be another one that goes below the tube that goes straight across to the front this piece stands up at the front so it'll bridge the gap between that bar there and this bar just here Right, so a quick update on the skeleton. Uh, as you can see, I've done a fair bit more to it. Uh, the plan I've got right now is to use the cloth tape there to kind of mark out the perimeter of this. So for example, this slope right here goes to that slope right there. I'll string that across with the cloth tape and same with these bits up here. I'll then, while it's still out of the box, sand it back and apply some fiberglass to it and then insert this whole thing. I'll also do the curve that goes right back there. That's the big curve that goes up the back of the box right there. I'll also do that. As for the bit at the front, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing here yet. I was originally thinking of having a thing that went like that up so I could uh, do some work on adding this piece to it, but I'm not really sure how I can do that. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't go straight up from here like I was originally hoping. This doesn't quite fit widthwise into the box at the front of the tube. So what I'm going to have to do is have it extend out 6 centimeters and then go up 28 centimeters to reach the bottom of this, 
which then makes up last two centimeters to be equal with the tube. So that distance from the bottom of the tube to there is 28 centimeters. Yeah, you can see that I'm not putting a, a ton of effort into this as this isn't so much structural, it's more to do with getting the expansion rate of the horn constant. So I don't have any chambers where it expands faster and then it expands slower, which could, which will most likely give it a peak in its output at one particular frequency, which I'm trying to avoid. It looks like worst case scenario has, for example, the fourth before, uh, it just adds more peaks. And the idea of the horn is there's no one peak because it expands at a constant rate. There's no real cavity to cause a resonance apart from that five litre one on top of the tube, but it's so small, it's got a very wide frequency response curve, which is why horns have a good frequency range. And if done right, not so much of a peak. But yeah, regarding this thing, I think I might just uh, cover it up with tape now, add some expanding foam to the outside of it and inside of it in certain places in order to finish this as a piece, then insert it into the box and add the curved bit there once this is all in. It's going to be really hard to sand though. I've done some more work to the skeleton and now you can see it's looking a bit more complete. Uh, you can see there's the rear section there. It goes under the tube, up the front and right now this piece here is gluing on. And this is where the driver is going to be mounted. So the next thing I've got to do is I've got some masking tape uh, right here. Uh, painting tape and this tape is going to be going across these surfaces here and on the inside of that surface there so from this angled bit to the inside of this angled bit. I'm then going to be fiberglassing the rear of these patches of masking tape using this woven mat right here and hopefully that'll hold its shape and have enough time to dry and then I'll use expanding foam behind it. Uh, regarding the slope inside, I'm thinking I'm going to fill it up with a fair bit of expanding foam. Uh, not completely full, as I don't need a large area. And then carve away till I get the right shape and add the fiberglass matting over the top of that. So it should all be quite stiff. I would have preferred using plywood and just twisting it, but it's too hard and I couldn't be bothered doing any more curves when I don't need to. I could possibly do one from here. Uh, up to the top a big curve there, but it needs to meet the bottom of the box flush in the top and a kerf would have that much thickness then I'd have to sand it down and you know it becomes a fair amount of effort for something I could just do with fiberglass. But for those two bits right there is definitely worth doing it out of plywood. I've taped up one of the sides now what I need to do is cut the fiberglass matting into the right shape, uh, mix up some resin and add it. I should use a paintbrush to do it, but I'm not sure where one is right now. I'm just going to start by doing this one bit just to minimize hassle. And if it goes badly, then oh, I haven't committed to doing it on a larger bit. So there's the first bit of fiberglass matting in. Uh, as you can see, there's some creases and I couldn't get it perfect, which, you know, it's really hard to press it down against tape and get it perfect without warping the tape itself. So that'll do. I now just add the resin and any imperfections on it. If they're only minor, I'll be able to sand them out. And if they're major, that's what I got the builder's bog for. So I can add that to it and sand it back and that'll fill in any dips I've got. I added roughly the right amount of fiberglass resin to it. I didn't go too precise because it always varies depending on the environment. But I probably did roughly about 100 mils, which is what it needed, about 80 mils, is what it said. So hopefully this all sets hard and holds its shape. Uh, the tape did begin to sag in that corner, so if you can read that, the, there's some wording under there. I just folded the label over, I just folded the card label over and propped it up using that bit of wood just there, just to try to hold it. Now it says full cure time, about 24 hours. So it'll be right to sand in 24 hours, which is unfortunately this time at night. So that means I can't do anything to it during the day. So I'll see if I can find something else I can work on in there. Or depending on how it goes, it should be, it should be hard enough to hold its shape. 
uh, I'd say by the end of tonight. So tomorrow I should be able to work around it, but I won't be able to sand it until it's completely dry and I won't be able to add any of the builder's bog only there to it until it's dry. Also the bog I'm using is a uh, two-part epoxy. It's not like wood putty or anything, it's, it's proper hard setting epoxy. So it should work with this fiberglass just here quite well. That stuff, all, that stuff also sets rock hard. I've had to patch boxes with it and honestly the patch was stronger than anything else in the box. The only other bit of fiberglassing I've done, these two things here, which uh, if you don't recognize them, these are port flare templates. Uh, usually they would be, oh, there's one of them. And you can see that it does have a tinge to it and that is the same fiberglass resin that I'm using over there. So I did it to it to give it a nice hard coating and also I sanded it smooth. Uh, unfortunately it was not quite strong enough to support the weight of a human trying to bend PVC over it so that was a bit unfortunate. Uh, the more plain patches, sorry, the green patches, uh, the green slash grey patches are the bog that I used and the green sheen that the whole thing has got is the epoxy resin that I'm using to fiberglass with. So that's all, I've never actually done any proper fiberglassing, I've just used resin, but I've seen it done quite a few times and hopefully I've got enough third hand experience that I can do this without too many problems. Unfortunately just after this part of the video I got sick, but I have got back and done some more work in the meantime, so look forward to some more content coming up shortly. But thanks for watching, if you're a regular viewer, if you'd like, just so I know how many people are regulars. I want to see if I can get over a 1 to 10 like ratio on this video if possible. Yeah, see you in the next episode.